What's going on everybody? Welcome back for another video. In this one, we're going to be giving the brake system on the PTGT a complete overhaul, getting them all installed and ready to go. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Jimmy and uh, yeah, I like these cars for some reason. <laughs> this is my 2004 PT Cruiser GT. I love this car to death. I have so many plans for it right now. It is a stage one car. So it has a Mopar stage one PCM. It has an exhaust intake. Suspension is been basically rebuilt it's currently running teen lowering springs but over winter i plan to do things like completely different suspension and uh, some other secrets that i can't talk about yet but i just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in for this one and i hope you enjoy because this one has been a long time coming and i cannot wait to take you guys along for this one so without further ado let's get into the video What is going on guys? Today we are finally getting started on the PTGT's full complete brake job. We're gonna be giving this car the brakes that it has deserved for a very long time. Brakes are kind of an afterthought, usually for me anyways. I know some people are super OCD about them. And I have a feeling after doing this that it's probably going to change my mindset a little bit because nice brakes are just nice and i've never had like nice brakes of any kind on this car a couple years ago now back when i was still in college i bought some really cheap like 20 dollars rotors i had a coupon code on jc whitney and i got like the cheapest ones and i don't i don't even know if they were 20 dollars. might even been cheaper got some super cheap metallic pads and threw it together and also one of my rear brakes i think um has different brakes or at least one different rotor because i actually had an issue with one of my calipers losing one of its pins and coming off off on the highway that was a while ago now man that, that could have been more than two years ago which is crazy to think about but needless to say this car has never gotten any love in the braking department so today that's exactly what we are gonna give it. We're gonna be putting four brand new rotors on it and we're going to be putting some super, super nice pads on which I am super excited to unbox and show you guys. My rotors don't get here until tomorrow but my pads are already here. To get started, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing everything apart, get the car up in the air and wheels off and take the brakes apart. Kinda look at what we're working with and also see how bad the current rotors are which I'm kinda excited to show you guys and finally get some shots of them off the car because they're pretty rusted and pretty bad. Then we'll unbox our new pads and we'll also check out our new rotors and all explain why I picked everything I did and why I'm going with what I'm going with and hopefully we'll be getting this job done between tonight and tomorrow in two days so without further ado let's get started tearing this thing apart And just like that, I already went ahead and removed all the other wheels and spacers, which is a pain in the butt. But now that those are out of the way, they go ahead and start pulling our brakes apart. I'm gonna go ahead and start with our front passenger side rotor. I can't wait to show you guys what these look like on the back. My camera's already about to die. That's what I'd love to see. Oh, there's that disgusting thing. As you guys can see here now with the rotor off the car, there's like a whole line that was not contacting the rotor where the pad was hitting and there's a lot of rust, the whole rust line there. The other side I think is gonna be even worse, but you can, like over here you can see, it was like, it, it was just, it's bad. <laughs> partly the pads, partly the rotor. The rear pad is worn quite a bit more than the front, but still life left in them both. We're definitely going to be cleaning out our guide pins and everything and making sure they're good to go and lubing them up. But these rotors have just seen better days. They're also really warped. It's time, it's time. The rear calipers are painfully easy to remove on these cars. There's literally only these two little 10 millimeter studs. They don't have a very tight torque spec, so they come out usually really easily. And the actual mounting bracket for the caliper is built right into the hub, so you don't even have to remove that like you in the front. And just a quick little look at things in the front in case anybody's wondering, this is the caliper mounting bracket the pads fit into. Actually, it looks like our pad is seized right into the bracket which would explain some things you see the pad set in the mounting bracket like so and it goes in there 
like that. These two eight millimeter bolts, they're usually pretty hard to get out. And also one of the bolts for the strut actually sticks out and gets in the way. So you can't completely pull it out unless you remove that bolt, which is no big deal. I don't have to completely remove it, but kind of interesting. But I didn't realize that before until now, but that would explain some things and maybe why everything is worn like it is because I probably didn't uh, take care of my hardware like I should have when I replaced them before. I found that these recalipers can be a little bit of a pain to actually like physically remove because there's little tabs on the pads and on the caliper itself that are supposed to like keep it lined up but, but sometimes they conflict with each other a little bit. Once I stare at that for a while and figure out how it all goes together sometimes I can just pry up on one of these tabs on the front pad and remove it and uh, simply remove basically pad from the caliper to get the caliper off like so. Now our caliper is off. And here's our pad and you can see like the little notches there in the end. Those lock into this and um, keep the pad in place. So you kind of got to pop the pad out to get it out. Depends, but kind of a pain. <laughs> Also, something that I kind of like for holding the caliper up that I use all the time is these little tent strap things. They basically wrap around themselves and then the little ball on the end just kind of goes in the loop. And they're stretchy, kind of like a bungee. What are they called? Toggle, toggle balls. They're <laughs> also, make sure your e-brake is not on because I made the mistake of leaving my e-brake on when I tried to remove these so many times they would not come off. It was simply because the e-brake was on. That expands in the middle just like a drum brake. Basically like a drum brake in the middle of the disc and that's what the e-brake uses to operate. There we go. Yeah, you can see the back of these rotors are actually worn really weirdly too. And there's like a rust line and they're worn unevenly. It's really weird. And I think it's just because of the cheap pads, honestly. That and the fact that the grease is worn out over time and the pads started to wear unevenly. It kind of works out though because I was in need of adjusting my new brake shoes here for the e-brake. And now I can't because I'm replacing the brakes. <laughs> Went ahead and pulled the rest of the brakes apart off camera. And while everything's apart, I'm going to clean everything up, wire brush everything the best I can, paint everything, including the calipers. I also need to wire brush the hubs themselves, and we're going to put some anti-seize down before we put our new rotors back on. But speaking of new rotors, I have all of our new brakes right here, and I'm going to talk about them right now. Something that I need to order, though, or try to get today is new lug nuts, because this one actually came apart, and most of my lug nuts on this car are just in terrible shape, and I think now is the time to finally replace them, especially because this one literally like the outside chrome finish just pulled off of it. Before our pads, I went with EBC yellow pads. Some of you may know about EBC, some of you may not, but I've had them recommended to me multiple times. And actually a YouTuber who I have watched for many, many years, Evan Shanks, recommended EBC uh, yellow brake pads and he used them on some of his cars. But you know what they say, it's all in the pads. And if you get a really, really good pad, that is what matters the most. But Evan highly recommended these and he's used them a lot. I remember he even did like autocross stuff with these pads in the past and had good luck. So I didn't cheap out on the pads this time around. I got these really nice ones. These were close to 300 bucks just themselves. And then I went ahead and got all Napa premium rotors. I didn't get drilled or slotted. From what I know, the main thing with drilled and slotted rotors is that they dissipate gases and, and dust and, and stuff like that and heat that is created from the pads. And if you get really, really nice pads, it's not really necessary to go that route. It will just wear down the pads a little quicker and could also cause premature wear and cracking and stuff like that, so. But yeah, long story short, that's what I go by when I buy brakes for cars. And the theory that I go by from now on was that it's all in the pads, like drilled and slotted stuff and, and all of that kind of stuff. And basically any kind of fancy rotor isn't always necessary. I'm sure they're better in some cases, but for a car like this, this is probably the best way to go. And I'm extremely excited to test out EBC pads because I have heard nothing but awesome things about them. I also got this new little wire brush. This thing is really cool. It's like smaller and more narrow and I'm going to use that to clean up the hubs and everything and get everything ready to get painted and get anti seize put on it and uh, start reassembling our new brakes. Well, this pin ain't coming out.
Nope. Eventually. Oh, finally, holy crap. This pin was super stuck in there. I did not expect that to happen. I didn't know any of them were stuck, but that would explain some of our weird brake wear as well. Got them soaking in some PB now, and we'll get them cleaned up. I don't want to reuse those caliper guide pins, and I probably should have thought about grabbing some new ones. I don't know if I have any spare ones in my parts cabinet. Also got the EBC yellow pads out of the box here for the front. You can see what they look like. They're literally yellow. They're called the yellow stuff pads, and I've heard so many good things about them. I'm super excited to test them out, like I said before. The one thing that I can say is that it did not come with hardware, like I would have expected and like a lot of brakes usually do which is okay because i believe i have some spare hardware in my my parts cabinet right there other than that we're pretty much good to go i'm just going to completely clean our mounting brackets and shoot them with a quick coat of paint i'm also going to paint the calipers while they're off and we should be good to go boys our brakes are all completely done all four corners got everything put back together got our rears put back together the fronts are completely done everything's looking super super good i'm so stoked also the paint jobs turned out pretty good on the calipers and stuff it's not perfect but considering it was a rust-oleum job real quick it looked way better and it's going to keep them protected a little bit also went ahead and threw all our wheel spacers back on and torqued them down real quick off camera all we got to do now is put our wheels on and we are good to go brakes are usually not a big deal to have to get done but when you're replacing literally all all four corners and cleaning everything up and you know wire brushing everything and, and taking that time that extra step to make sure that it's a hundred percent um it's it's a lot of work and this is taking way longer than i wanted it to but i couldn't be happier with the result and i cannot wait again to test these out and now all the wheels are torqued down as you know i wanted to get new lug nuts i ordered some they're not here yet obviously but i did have one spare lug nut that i could put in in place of the one that had come apart so i had threw that on and now we're good to take her out for a spin today i also went ahead and finished doing our little coolant flush that we've been working on for a while when i did my last run of pure water through the system and now i just went ahead and filled it up with go5 so now there's only one thing left to do that's right you guys guessed it. <laughs> All that work that we did down there for the past three days, that does nothing for anything. It's the sticker that actually improves your braking performance. On the real though, I love it when companies send a bunch of stickers with stuff. I get all excited and I love to put them places. Slap it right here above our Circuit Demon sticker. Is that straight? I think it's straight. Another one to add to the collection. <laughs> All right, let's see if she starts okay. I also forgot to check my serpentine belts from before, so I'll have to do that sometime, but see, she might squeak. We'll see. Nope, she started up beautifully. <laughs> she is chirping quite a bit, though. I really, I really just need to buy a new belt for this stupid thing. 
Oh yeah, by the way, a little update on our wonderful check engine light. It's back on because of the O2 sensor. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to figure that out still before I go ahead and get this thing inspected. I'm pretty sure that it just needs an O2 sensor. So I'm probably just gonna buy one and throw it in and, and hopefully that takes care of the issue. But I'll look over the wiring and everything one more time and make sure our grounds are all good before I do. But this has been kind of an on off thing for a long time. So I'm pretty sure it's just, it's just, it, it needs to be replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and pump our brakes though. All right, now they feel good. So EBC has here on their website, they show you the process of bedding in your new brakes, which basically, if you don't know what that is, bedding in your brakes means like you have to wear them in basically in a certain way so that they contact the rotor in the best way possible. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't actually know that. <laughs> it's basically breaking in the brakes. And hey, hey, that right, breaking in the brakes, hey. So it's telling us to use the brakes with minimal pressure for the first 100 miles at slower speeds um, and then drop further and start using increased brake pressure and um, it's about a 250 mile process which kind of sucks but you know what that's okay because we're just gonna cruise it around a little bit and um, get these things broken in oh baby I miss you when I don't drive you First light braking, felt very good. Our second light braking. Felt very good. <laughs> Few inches later. This car looks so freaking good right now. It, it's kind of funny because you don't think about brakes making a difference in how a car aesthetically looks, but just having nice clean black calipers back in there and nice new looking, not rusty, crappy looking brakes behind those chrome wheels just looks so much better. And it cleaned the car up a lot. I wouldn't have thought that it would have, but cars looking and driving amazing now. I haven't been able to, you know, drive too much with the brakes. I have to go through the bedding process. I don't have to, but I'm gonna follow the process according to what EBC says and do everything you know with suburban driving and everything and drive it lightly at first and then a little bit more and then actually slam on the brakes heat them up and like bed them in I want to make sure that everything is 100% and um, go through that whole process so we're definitely gonna be making another video here with the PTGT I'm probably just gonna do a whole like back road hooning video of some sort when we finish this up and get the brakes all broken in and make sure that this car is 100% here for the rest of the season I was hoping to do a little bit more driving in this video but we did all of the major stuff which I'm super excited for and I'm glad I was able to make a whole video on it. I know people ask me about the brakes on these cars sometimes. So now you know, that's kind of the process I go through, kind of my mindset when I buy brakes and things like that. The main thing is that it's finally done. And now this car is perfect. We just got a couple more things to figure out and got to figure out our oxygen sensor code, maybe replace our oxygen sensor finally. And uh, then we can get this thing inspected as well. Still got like a week or two before I got to worry about it, but I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. Anyways, hit the thumbs up button if you did. Stay tuned for the next one on this car, as well as a couple other really good ones. I might I actually have two other videos for you guys this week so be sure to stay tuned turn on your notifications if you haven't already hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and again guys hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in the next one god bless and peace out